Hi everyone, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF and on today's episode we've got a special extended episode and I'm going to be going through my entire collection. Now to do a bit of admin on that, I'm going to be doing this just basically as if it was a live stream almost, uncut, unfiltered, just plowing straight through it. Very unprofessional to some, but I'm just going to be reaching down here to grab bottles. Well, I've got about 50 bottles to go through, but the serious admin of that is let's get a whiskey in my glass first so that I can sip while I'm talking because this is going to be a long one. Let's reach down here and get one of my absolute favourites and one of my top viewed videos this year, and that's the Grigaliki 21 by Douglas Lang. Um, talking of which, if you haven't checked out my uh, top videos of uh, 2019 yet, go and check out that playlist because that is the most liked videos, the 10 most liked videos of 2019. So you can go back and check out those videos on that playlist. Let's pour this in and we'll get talking. A quick shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you very much for your support over the last few years, especially this year. It's been a very good year. Thank you very much. Uh, your coins, your No Nonsense Whiskey Clear coins will be on their way to you just as soon as I can get them prepared. But uh, if you have to wait a few months, then please forgive me, but they will be on their way to you. If you're interested in uh, joining Patreon, go and check me out on Patreon. There's a link in the description below. Anyway, let's get on to the first bowl. The first set, the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to literally plug them out and put them on the side here. Uh, the first ones, the first sort of um, 25 or so, about half, are ones I've already covered. So if you're interested in extended thoughts on those, then do check out the actual videos for them. So the first one, of course, is the Krigeliki 21 Douglas Lang. Now, actually, a friend lent me this because I've got the 12-year one somewhere in here. We'll get to it. Uh, and I did a comparison video on those, and it's uh, this is just an absolutely stunning dram. Um, I forget the actual price of it, but it's really quite cheap. Uh, the major benefit of independent bottlings is that the, you can get relatively high age statements for much less than you would get from the actual distilleries themselves. So worth checking out. And of course, you know, without all the, the, the rest of the faff as well. So this is obviously unchill filtered, uncolored. Uh, I think it's cast strength as well. I'm not sure. Uh, I can never remember with these whether they're uh, single casks or not. I think they say on here. So yeah, single cask. There you go. Of course, sometimes when you get the special bottlings from independent bottlers, they're kind of like small batch rather. All right, so that's probably going to go out of view. So I'm just going to put that over there, looking on the camera. Now what I'm going to do is, I literally, I'm just going to reach down here and just grab stuff. There's no order to this, so there's no like best to worst or worst to best or anything like that. So if you see some stuff you don't like, do let me know in the comments because I would love to hear your thoughts on anything to do with it. Because there are some, there are some real rubbish drams in here. Not this one though. Now this one, I'm delighted to tell you that you can now get this in the UK. I think it's on Master of Malt, but uh, before. When I covered this a few years ago, um, I haven't had this bottle for a couple of years, but I've managed to pick up another bottle recently. Uh, it's it's a, it's a bog standard whiskey for sure. If you're in the area in Texas, then um, it's something you can pick up for like thirty dollars. It's quite cheap, but it's quite difficult for us to get hold of, or at least it was. Now it's a bit more available. So if you're in the UK now, do jump go and check this out. It's like uh, it's like vanilla supreme. It's uh, amazing. They've got a really good story about this as well. Go and check out my actual video on that if you want to know a little more. Okay, first bad one. Uh, this is the Clark's 1866 from Aldi. Um, it's some questions about this for sure. Uh, Clark's Distilling Company, who are they? Where are they from? Um, famous since 1866. In fact, I had a, uh, a comment on the video to this saying that um, it can't be bad because they've been making it since 1866, but that's just, it's not really true. Uh, it's certainly not been making this whatever it, the kind of liquid is in here, whatever they used to make would have been a very different beast. But yeah, um, you can tell, I mean, this is actually a loner as well, but my friend lent me this and it was it was like here and I've had this much of it. I haven't gone back to it since. Don't think I will bother buying it ever again, but it's quite cheap. It's about 12 pound for a bourbon, which is not that bad. Kilhoman, Machia Bay, just covered this on the channel, had this in my collection for a while. It's their entry level whiskey for sure. Um, I got this really quite cheap. It was about £27. Absolute no brainer. It's a little bit more expensive than that. Lots of excellent kind of. Like, I like this extra. When this, this is finished, I'll probably try and prize this off somehow and I don't know what I'll do with that, but it's nice to keep. I tend to keep corks as well. You never know, just in case. But um, yeah, nice entry level smoky whiskey. It is heavy on the smoke, really. Uh, not a beginner's dram, I would say, but worth a go. Worth a go. Next up, the McMira Brooks whiskey, another entry level whiskey. Second bottle I've ever owned of this, um, and I didn't actually recover it. Um, I don't think I will either, to be honest, because it hasn't changed at all since the last time. You can pick this up fairly easy in the UK now. It used to be 
uh, only in Sweden, I guess. But um, this one's like, you know, it's like this. I don't know if you can see that. There's Swedish all over the side of this. Um, but this is definitely kind of UK import, so you must be able to get it somewhere. Not sure of the cost anymore, but I think it's relatively cheap. A uh, big fan of McMira. You've seen me cover quite a lot of their bottlings now. Um, this is just a kind of, you know, no frills entry level. Can't really say fairer than that. It's It won't blow your socks off, but it's all right. Tomatin Legacy. Now, fans of the show will know uh, I absolutely love this stuff. Um, the story behind this, uh, the first time I ever tried it, Roy Aquavite sent me a blind tasting. And this came second only to like a 27-year-old Longmorn, I think. Longmorn? I think it might have been a Longmorn. I can't remember now off the top of my head, to be honest. Um, but the nose on this thing is fabulous. So I tried to pick up a bottle. Can't find it down where I am at all. But this goes for about £25 in Scotland. And uh, a great guy sent me this, uh, and I obviously paid him back for it, but um, I've just kind of, kind of been nursing it, even though it's a bit easy to get hold of. In fact, this showed up on Aquavite's recent live blind tasting. Excellent video. I think one of the best things I've ever been involved in. And it didn't do so well for me on that one. Uh, maybe because I recognised it, or maybe the quality of the other drams was right up there. But this one came uh, either last or second to last this time for me. But still a quality dram for the price. Well worth picking up. Ah, okay, this one's a little bit different. So, uh, the <laughs> Hibiki Japanese Harmony Bottle. Um, haven't got around to taking the label off yet, but as you might guess by the colour of that, um, this is actually my Bourbon Infinity Bottle right now. So, anything kind of bourbon related, um, or if it could be classed as bourbon but isn't called bourbon, and I like it, that's the big one. If I like it, it goes in here. Um, I do put some rise in here, but only if I really like them. Um, if, if it's not something I like, I don't chuck it in. So that one's, it's not too bad at the moment. It's not the best it's ever been, but it's uh, its a pretty good infinity bottle. I like the shape of this and I keep meaning to delabel it to kind of take away those branding so it doesn't get as confusing. But um, if you keep an infinity bottle, let me know because um, I really enjoy the whole infinity vo bottle vibe. Uh, I've got another one hidden in here somewhere as well. So we'll get to that for scotches. Talking of bourbons that aren't bourbons that are bourbons. The Jack Daniels Single Barrel Select. Now, again, just literally just covered this recently. Uh, I picked this up really cheaply in a local supermarket last Christmas. Not the one that's just gone, the 2019, but the 2018 one. Kind of sat on it for a bit. Wasn't sure if I was going to open it or not. Opened it and was very surprised by the liquid in here. Really quite tasty, especially when you pay £25 for it. 50 quid, pushing it a bit, but it is a tasty whiskey. And that I would put in my Affinity bottle. Can't really say fairer than that. Again, just a reminder, these are whiskies that I've covered, so if you're interested in my thoughts on these in any kind of greater depth, check out the description below, and I should have put links to all of these there. Uh, now, okay, first full bottle. I don't often keep full bottles, but um, you'll see why. This is the Glengoyne Legacy Chapter 1. Um, haven't heard anything about Chapter 2, but it, it can't be far off. But yeah, this one's sealed. I did have another bottle of that, which I covered. And uh, that's now disappeared because I actually quite enjoyed it. Glengoyne are a bit hit and miss with me. Uh, but I tried this at the distillery when I visited last February. Bought two bottles and, you know, can't say fair in that. I'm, I'm not really sure why I'm holding on to it. I severely doubt that it'll be worth anything when uh, the collection is complete. But, you know, I think what I'll probably do is just keep hold of it for when the collection is complete. And then I can sort of do a, a, a complete coverage of the range in one video maybe. I don't know. I don't really have a very good reason for keeping it other than there's no really reason to open it either. That's my excuse anyway. If you're desperate for me to open that, then let me know. Aerolite Lindsay. Now this popped into my uh, my letterbox actually. Um, I, uh, I didn't pay for this. I got sent it by the brand, um, I guess to increase their exposure. Um, it's all right, you know, it's a, a 10 year old Isla whiskey and this is what this is a kind of a, an anagram of. A 10, 10 year Isla, I think it is. Um, it's by Atom Brands, uh, the people who do uh, Batiki Whiskey Company and all that lot. Um, so they, they've set up this new one called the Character of Isla Whiskey Company. Not sure what they're going to do with it yet, but um, it's a good entry level. A little bit expensive for my tastes, but it's um, it's pretty good. Pretty tasty, pretty tasty. JP Weiser's Legacy. Now, this thing, uh, again, is a uh, relatively cheap bog standard whiskey over in Canada. Uh, you can't get it anymore, it's been discontinued, but this was hand hauled over for me by Foodquig uh, when I met him in uh, my kind of nearest big city, Whiskey City, Birmingham. Uh, that 
he bought this for me. So this will always be special to me. It goes in my special cabinet, even though it's, again, relatively cheap. Nearly done with it. Um, I should have got him to sign it when he was over here. And this is why I have, you can't see it's off camera, but I have this Glen Gassal Torfer box. Um, not because it's special in itself, but just because of the story. That's the reason why I keep that. Woodford Reserve. This is the standard Kentucky Straight Bourbon, Distiller Select, whatever that means. But this is the kind of opening salvo from uh, Woodford Reserve. Uh, I picked this up quite cheap. Again, uh, Marks and Spencers of all places, about £30. Probably get it cheaper in the US, um, whatever the conversion is. But for a kind of above 40% bourbon, this is pretty good. It's pretty good. I really enjoy this, in fact. I, I have had two bottles of this in the past, so I've hammered through this. And uh, when it goes, I'm not sure I'll, I'll rush out to buy more of it, but if it passes my way, I certainly won't say no. I'm hoping I'm not going to run out of space this year. Usually I do. I've got this whole... It'll probably end up stacking up here somewhere, but we'll see. We'll see. Hatozaki Pure Malt. Now, this got uh, came to me via the Somerton Club. Now, um, if you're not sure who they are, it's a subscription service in the UK who uh, send bottles out every two months, and it's £50 for that, that one bottling. So you don't pay £50 a month, you pay one time every two months. A little bit confusing, but that's how it works. Uh, this came my way because of that. Um, it's it's a half decent whiskey, I have to say. Um, for You're paying for the Japanese label, the £50. If it had a, Scot a Scottish label on it, I don't think they would get away with charging anywhere near that much. Um, personally, I don't think it's really worth that sort of money, but it, it's nice to try it, nice to try it. And um, you know you can't get it cheaper than that including postage and packaging. So I'm not sure that the, the distillery themselves, the uh, Kaikyo, Kaikyo, Kaikyo distillery will, will kind of do well off the back of it, but whatever. Famous Vincent. Now, I, I get some comments about this sometimes when people see it in the background, but uh, this is not a special bottling of the famous grouse or anything like that. It literally is just a rebranded, relabeled for, and I was actually given this for my wedding. Um, Quite a few years ago now. I mean, we're coming up to six years next year, but uh, I, people keep asking me, should I open it or should I, I seal it? There's no reason for me to open this at all because I don't particularly like the liquid that's inside, and that is a big old bottle. I mean, it's uh, it, well, it says it's a 70 cilliliters, but I really don't think it is. That's the comparison of a 70 cilliliter, um, centiliters, not cilliliters, centiliters. So I think this might be a liter, and this might be re might be labelled incorrectly. But uh, yeah, I'm just not gonna drink it, so why bother? Leave it sealed. Nice little kind of wedding talking piece. Here's the other Infinity bottle. Now, eagle-eyed people will be able to see the Glengoyne livery still on there because they they kind of, uh, I guess they mould it. I get it moulded glass. Um, it's a pretty nice bottle. Uh, last year, if you watched my uh, collection video last year, uh, and let me know if you're doing that by the way. If you're watching and comparing what I do and don't have still. Then um, you know you've got a lot, a lot of time on your hands, but uh, let me know if you're doing that. I actually transferred this from the previous bottle because it had sediment in it, and I wanted a better bottle. So I I ran it through a coffee filter, actually a nice clean coffee paper filter, and it took out all the sediment um, and left me with a nice clean bottle of my own making. Tuck that one right up there, just off screen. Never mind. Aha! Ha, here we go. Johnny Walker. White Walker. Still have it. I'm not even sure how much is in there. Not much now. Uh, I tend to keep it around uh, because I'm not going to drink it. It's I don't like it. I'm not going to lie. It's uh, it's a nice entry level whiskey and if you enjoy it, I'm not telling you that you shouldn't enjoy it, but I just, it's not for me. Um, cynical, cynical whiskey, unfortunately. But uh, I tend to sneak it into blind tasting sometimes because, not because I want to tease people or you know, whatever, but I, I want to see how it compares to other things. I want to see if I'm justified in not liking it. And I have to say, more often than not, it comes last in almost every blind tasting. I put it in, even when I put it in comparable whiskies. It'll be your kind of bog standard blends, like your famous grouse and things like that, for sure. But, you know, when you compare it to some of the other stuff I've got on the table here, no contest. More McMira. So this again came to me by way of the Somerton Club, and this one is the Skogshalon, Skogshalon, which is like forest raspberry or something like that. So it's finished in raspberry wine casks. It's pretty damn tasty. As you can see, I've hammered this. I only just got this in 
oh October I want to say but um, I've gone through it pretty quickly uh, and happy about it took it to a whiskey club and they they enjoyed it as well uh, it came, it was down from 115 pounds to 50 pounds for the members um, definitely not worth 115 pounds but I was pretty happy with it at 50 now this thing here you know you know I love this thing the Highland Park 21, I got this for £100, the second most expensive bottle of whiskey I ever bought with my own money and uh, an absolute bargain and I will never get this again because even if I could get it, it's so expensive now that it just isn't worth the money. Uh, if I would have been, I don't know, maybe clever about it, I could have kept this sealed and sold it for a tidy profit but then I wouldn't have got to enjoy this and I wouldn't have been able to share this with some good friends who also wouldn't have been able to afford it. So I have a wee bit left here. Uh, I'm gonna savor that. Um, I'm not gonna be sending this out to anyone else, I don't think. That's gonna be mine and mine alone. Selfish, I know, but whatever. And I'm gonna save it for a special occasion. Who knows when such a thing will turn up. Kill Karen, 12 year old. Was sent this by Roy, actually. I can't remember what the occasion was. I think it was, um, you know, uh, tiding over a milestone or, or something like that. But it, it was uh, maybe, I think it was my three year anniversary present from him but um, really glad to have got this I did cover a sample of this rather than a bottle um, unfortunately the service that he used um, the uh, tin was a bit bent when it came back so I just threw that away I'm not a big fan of keeping tins you see I've got the tin here but once I've reviewed a whiskey as you can see I just tend to just throw the box away no I'm not really bothered about that it's all just marketing faff but uh, this thing here is astounding um, and I, I would like to say it's one of the worst kept secrets in whiskey it's so cheap and they could charge so much more for this. It's about £35. And when people tell me that they're into whiskey and haven't tried it, I, I genuinely don't understand why not. Um, it, there's a little bit of smoke to it for sure. If you're not into that, then then whatever. But it's just a tiny wee bit of smoke. So it's a good bridging whiskey, I think. I'm going to take a sip because I've been talking for a, a few minutes now. Bear with. This is going to be a long one. I'm looking at it. 17 minutes already. Glen, Glen Morangi Yolanta. I've had this thing in my cabinet for years now uh, and it's getting pretty low so I'm probably going to kill it off this year. The most expensive bottle I've ever purchased at £185 including fees and it's just been going up and up since there. It was £66 on release and I missed out. Uh, I had to pick it up on secondary. One of the reasons why I won't bother doing it anymore I think because uh, although this is one of the best whiskies I've ever tried I just can't be bothered with spending that much money on whiskey when you got so much good stuff that you can buy much cheaper than that. I'm not. I'm not a bottle, bottle chaser, as you might well know. I will have ten year. Uh, re pick this up. Re pick this up. Re purchase this this year uh, to cover it again um, because it was one of the first whiskies I ever covered all them years ago when I started my channel uh, for the, my three year celebrations. I covered the first three whiskies, sort of. I think it was like the first four, and this was one of them. And uh, do you know what? It's uh, it's pretty damn good. It's um, it's cheap, it's about £20 in the UK, 40%, added colour, chill filtered, all that crap, probably. Um, and it, it's still a viable whiskey, in my opinion. You know, it's one of those ones that you could easily have around, you could easily purchase over and over again. Bernheim Original, Wheated Whiskey. Uh, another one that came to me via Sonaton Club, you'll, you'll see a little uh, kind of pattern here. I get one of those every two months, as I said earlier. So I, uh, you know, I tend to cover them, why not? Um, when I was in America, I saw this for so much cheaper than we get it in the UK, which is a real shame. But in the UK, it does cost over £50. So when it came as part of my subscription, it was one of those whiskies that I'd been thinking about purchasing, but didn't because of the price. Then it came my way anyway, and uh, I've greatly enjoyed it. I haven't really been tapping into it. It's been kept away in my cupboard because I don't really want to spend that sort of money again. That's the big problem with it. I wouldn't buy it again, but that's not based on the liquid inside. It's just the price point in the UK. It's so much cheaper in the US. It's like $30, $35 in the UK and 50 pounds. Uh, I said UK then, didn't I? It's $35 in the US and 50 pounds in the UK. It's too much. So this one, uh, you probably wonder why I've got the box and why I've got this sealed, which I have, but uh, this is the inaugural release of the Cotswolds. Um, I've just finished my actual my other bottle of that, it's over there somewhere. Uh, I've got this one sealed because, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, yeah it does. It's been signed by Dan Shaw, uh, the CEO and uh, founder of the Cotswolds. So I'm not sure what to do with this one yet, I have to admit. 
uh, in many years to come, this bottle will be worth a, a serious bit of cash, I think. So, I, I yeah, I'm not sure what to do with it, I have to admit. It's just going to be one of those things that I keep. Um, I The other bottle is also signed, and it's empty now. Uh, I, I'm not keeping it just purely for the cash. But um, I imagine when I'm six feet under, my grandchildren or whatever will find this. Uh, and it will make them a tidy profit because I, I, it's one of those things it's a bit special I think now um, and as they continue to grow that'll only get better oh unplanned but uh, Cotswolds again this is one of their most recent releases uh, and this is the peated cask and I've had this thing going for a few years now so it's uh, it's probably three to five years in here uh, aged in Lafroy quarter casks and it's just a really tidy dram it's, um, it's young but it's potent at 59.3 percent well worth your time if you can get hold of it uh, and i do tend to share that around because there are people that still don't trust them because they're so young but um, i have to say honestly do try to get hold of some cotswold stuff because they're doing excellent work there i'm gonna open this again glengoyne sample room as you might see there we've got this right around i do um, not much left in this now well i say that's 50 percent isn't it but this is my uh, bottle your own whiskey, which is so awesome. I had such a good experience there, thanks to uh, a competition that I won with my local whiskey club. Completely unaffiliated with YouTube whatsoever. But yeah, I blended that myself out of uh, several different samples available. And if you want to know more about that experience, then there's a video. You can go and check that out in the description below. I'm going to put that one right over there. We're getting to the end of these ones, and then we'll move on to the second half. <laughs> I know, it's a long video. Uh, the Krigaliki 12 year old, this is the one I picked up again with the Summerton Club uh, Whiskey Club vibes. Uh, got the 21 year from my friend uh, to do the comparison, but this is superb. Uh, again, a, a touch expensive for uh, 50 quid, but you really can't beat the kind of independent bottled stuff for their single barreled, their cask strength stuff, although I don't think this one is cask strength. Single casks, but not cask strength, whatever. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Pender and Sherry Wood just covered this. Uh, it's very, very tasty, but Penderin is a field divider. Um, it's a little bit like Aaron in that respect. It's got a bit of a, a funk about it, and it, if you like it, you like it, and if you don't, you don't. Uh, it's pretty much clear like that. I tend to really like Penderin. There's only a handful of bottles that they've done that I don't like. Uh, and even then, they're okay. But this one is a pretty good one. Recommended from me. Compass Box Peak Monster. Mmm, so good. Love this stuff. Uh, loving my independently bottled stuff at the moment and loving the blends that they come out with. Uh, this is clearly a, uh, a large amount of Laphroaig in there, but the best thing about Compass Box is that they will tell you everything about the whiskies they produce. All you have to do is go on the website. It's not, I mean, there's this inf information on here and on the box, but if you really, really, really want to nerd out over it, go and download their data sheets because they will tell you absolutely everything. Can more, strictly limited for the Birmingham Whiskey Club. Uh, picked this up last year as part of my membership. Um, unfortunately, not getting a new one this year because I had to downgrade my membership last year. But this is a nine year old Kalila, one of 20 bottles, and you can see nearly dead this is going to be getting killed off this holiday period with a friend of mine i'm probably going to do that tonight actually tonight of recording didn't cover it on the channel didn't really see the point to be honest because you'll you'll never be able to taste that same liquid as me no matter how much money you've got uh, it was fairly cheap i said uh, you know my, my membership was like i don't know what's my membership like 120 quid or something like that last year it's a bit more expensive this year but they, they're supposed to be rrp of about 50 pounds which is probably fair Considering it is like 60%, 60% dead on. Oh, absolute monster. Last but not least, the Cotswolds again. This is the founder's choice. Uh, I have to say, this is one of the best young whiskies I have ever tried in my entire life. Uh, really go and check out my video on this one. If there's any only one video you go and check out and you haven't already seen it, go and check out the founder's choice one because this is an absolutely astounding whiskey. Um, and would probably be my whiskey of the year to be fair but I, I think you guys would just call me a whiskey fanboy a Cotswolds fanboy if uh, I said that but it, it probably is right so there's actually fewer of these than there is of these so I'm going to crack up with these these are the ones that you haven't seen yet that I've got these are coming up on the channel 
I'm probably going to be just plowing straight through these in the new year. No sample reviews until a bit later on, unless something really interesting comes in. I've got a couple here, like the Goldrons, that I will cover. But mostly you're going to see bottles for me in the first half of next year. Let's get on with these and you can see what I've got coming up. All walks of life on the channel, as you know. We've got some basic bourbons here. The Evan Williams Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Just straight up. Extra aged in oak, it says. Don't, don't know what that means yet. Probably not a lot, to be honest. Fairly cheap in the UK, although I think you can get it much cheaper in the US. Looking forward to trying this one. I'm going to tuck that one right over there so it's off screen because I am running out of space over here. And you're, you're going to see a, uh, a bit of a bourbon vibe here because I'm definitely on a bourbon kick right now. Very old Barton, bottled in Bond. Six years old this is. Uh, tidy, tidy dram and it's only £30. I have to say, if you were comparing something like this, these two here, uh, in the UK, £25, £35, no contest. This, every day. But that said, if you've only got £25 to your name and you're desperate for a bottle of bourbon, then this one will do you. Got this for Christmas this year, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try my hardest to pronounce this. This is Norwegian whiskey, and I think it says uh, Jolid, Jolid, Jolid. This is a, a, a kind of Y, I think. Um, lots of Norwegian on the back there. Uh, really don't know anything about this, but I've had a sip out of this, and it was pretty damn tasty. Um, my uh, brother-in-law and his partner got this for me this Christmas, uh, and it's probably my favourite one that I got for this Christmas because it's 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 pretty good it's pretty good I'm not gonna lie um, I'm gonna reach around because I'm this is a lot of bourbon and bourbon related stuff that I'm covering again another present from the uh, the brother-in-law Highland Park 14 loyalty of the wolf uh, you can see I'm getting through it um, I want to really understand this dram before I bring it to you but I'm gonna probably cover it fairly soon to see if it's worth picking up or not um, it you probably know what I'm gonna say about it it's probably expensive and probably should be a bit cheaper but Whatever, it's Highland Park, right? More travel retail. Long Morn, uh, what do they call this? The Distiller's Choice. Uh, I know at least one person who really doesn't like this, and that's uh, Roy Agravite. Talked about Roy a lot, again. Um, but this is quite cheap. It was about sort of £35, so I picked it up. Um, and it was between this and the Lefroy 4 Oak. Um, as you can see, I don't tend to reach for it much, so probably should have picked up the 4 Oak, but... It's all right, it's all right. Oh, really running out of space. I'm gonna have to go yeah, right up against here. Eleanor. Mm. So this is the Crowded Barrel, um, AKA the Whiskey Tribe, AKA uh, the Whiskey Vault on YouTube. Um, I mean, if you're watching this, then you probably know who they are. If you don't know who they are, then go and check them out because they are the biggest channel by a long shot. Ralphie got dethroned sometime this year or last year. And uh, it's they've been just been through the roof. Excellent channel. They are uh, dare I say well funded. I mean they're a non profit organisation I believe, um, but they clearly have a, a, t a good team behind them. You know these are very talented people. Um, picked this up while I was over there for their bastards ball, and uh, it's a pretty astounding whiskey. They're not. This isn't their own creation yet. It's MGP sourced liquid aged in Texas. More about that when I actually cover it. It's a bit precariously perched that, but it'll do. Non whiskey. <gasps> this is some um, cognac. Lost my mind for a second. Then cognac. Uh, went to the cognac show in London last year, just for the, the hell of it. You know, see what was going on, and um, found myself really enjoying the stuff that was there. Very hard to distinguish between different kind of uh, cognacs there, but it's pretty astounding stuff. And this was one of the best ones that we tried for the money that day. So uh, actually everyone that I was with picked this up. Gonna be covering it at some point. Um, and then if you guys like the fact that I've covered some cognac, then uh, you'll have to hit the like button when you see it. Um, because if it doesn't get liked, then I won't do it again. Now this, uh, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna cover this or not. If you've made it this far in the video, then please hit the like button um, and tell me about this one here, because this is a French, I don't wanna say whiskey, because it's a boisson, Spiritu, sorry for really ruining your language there, but this is a mixed spirit drink, and it literally says on the back, a blend of distillates of agricultural origin, 94% and 6% uh, 
blended malt whiskey. So already, the, just even the six percent of it is a blended malt, and then it's mixed with like well, essentially just nat- neutral grain spirit, I guess. So what the basis of gin and vodka. Um, it's predictably terrible, but if you want me to cover that, maybe on April first or something like that, then let me know. But um, my uh, my my poor old dear gave me that. My mum gave me it. Um, maybe as a joke. I don't know. Mac by McMira. Um, this is their entry level, I guess. Um, I actually haven't seen this on the shelves. Uh, I got this off the rep at a show, and uh, it's very entry level. To be fair, um, I think they they've designed it to appeal to youngsters. You know, obviously, early drinkers uh, and uh, their mixing habits. Um, so, very much a mixer's whiskey, but it's better than most mixer's whiskies that I've tried. More bourbon, more bourbon. The Old Forester's 1920. Pick this up in October again because I cannot get this in the UK for a decent price. This cost me like forty-eight dollars, and it's a lot more than that in the UK for sure. But a most excellent bourbon looking forward to trying that one on the channel more Somerton Club this was the Christmas release get a good look at that label uh, the Whiskey Baron independent bottler uh, did a kind of like a kind of exclusive blend with them this is two scotch malt whiskies finished in fresh Oloroso octaves um, I wasn't sure about this when I first got it because I'm not a huge fan of sherry whiskies right now but this is a dynamite whiskey, um, 57.4%, absolutely banging. Um, the ABV on it hides anything that I might not like in the sherry wood. Artwork, you can't beat this sort of stuff. The Penderin Rhiannon. Uh, as you can see, I'll open this just to show you quickly. Uh, I've only had a wee, oh, <laughs> I forgot that the bottle is black. <laughs> Well, I have opened the seal anyway, um, but I've only had a wee dram of this. Um, it's uh, an interesting one, very different to their usual offerings. We'll need to delve into that more before I bring it to you. Handful left. Again, if you stayed with me, let me know. We're doing all right. We've got about half an hour now. Let's have a little look. Half an hour, bang in. Woo. Um, the next one is the Jim Beam Single Barrel 95 Proof. This thing is an absolute monster, and it's amazing. Love it. I'm um, going to be covering that one with glee soon. Should have done it at the same time as the JD, but um, didn't. You know, throws of life. Another one I got at Christmas, Glen Keith Distillery Edition. Only tried a little wee drop of that. It actually was a good, decent neck pour in here, so I've, you know, I've had a couple out of it. Um, it's uh, got a really nice nose on it. It's very much like the, uh, the Legacy. Uh, down there, the Tomatin Legacy, uh, on, in terms of like good nose, a slightly diminished palate, but never mind. Dalhwini Winter's Gold. Now, I don't know anything about this, but um, Whiskey Games UK, Matt Bishop, got in touch with me on Instagram saying, I hope you're going to be doing this from the freezer. And I sort of went, oh no, not another one of those. I read the back of it, or on the side, where does it say on the side? Chill a bottle of Dalhwini Winter's Gold in the freezer and let its rich... Gold whiskey reveal its smooth honey character as it warms in the mouth. Now, before I've even covered this, I have to say, what a load of nonsense. You know, if it's really that nice, if it's really that smooth and honeyed, then it would be like that at room temperature. Why do I need it to kind of reveal that from being bloody cold to not so bloody cold? I don't know. It's It confuses me um, to the point of frustration, that sort of... Rubbish. Oh, I'm so glad I've got a bottle of this now. Uh, can you believe this is the first bottle of this I've ever owned? The classic Laddie. Got this for Christmas. Another one where... Oh, it's, it's got this weird thing in the bottom of it. Can you see that plastic there? That keeps it in place, but it's very secure. Now this, entry level, Brook Laddie, but presented at 50%. Unbelievable. Unchill filtered and colouring free. Um, I mean, the reason why they go with this kind of opaque bottle is just it's their it's their colours. Um, they don't need to do it. It's fairly pale, but whatever. Uh, it, the the up in arms thing about this is that it used to be the Laddie Ten, and now it's just the classic Laddie. They've obviously reduced the age of it a little bit, but what are you gonna do? I've got five left. More travel retail. The Balvini triple cask. Um, again, another one from the uh, the brother-in-law and his partner uh, they treat me very well when it comes to whiskey 
Uh, I've been hammering this one a little bit. It's it's light in colour, and my lord, I wish it was more than forty percent. But I'll look forward to covering that. It's a, it's an interesting one for sure. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna run out of space a little bit, but four left. Pick this one up again in an airport. You can see that's one of my favourite things to do. Ugh, I hate it when they do this. It's all this extra flapping. The Ardbeg Korovjekin, which is like a whirlpool off the uh, off the coast of Isla. Um, it's an absolute monster at 57%, and I really like it. I, I do need to get that covered on the channel ASAP. Um, don't worry, I don't normally say it like that. Oh, yeah, this is a good. This is a good one. Right, more Penderin. Um, I have to show you this quickly because this really kills me. Uh, Penderin Rick joke. Pick this up for like thirty-five pounds in the UK. Um, I'm going to un unbox this packaging and show you a bit of cheeky nonsense that I will bring up on the uh, on the review. Um, I'm a big fan of Penderin, so don't take this the wrong way, Penderin. But what the hell is that about in there? What's the point in that? I mean, that's clearly to like I don't know. So. That's what it looks like on a relatively back, black background. And then chuck it in there. I mean, clearly it's a bit brighter and reflective, but... I don't know. I, I, I don't think you should do that, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it, it, the, there's only one reason that you could want to do that, and that's to be, to be misleading, right? Just being honest. Tormor 14, picked this up in France for a low, low price, thinking that we couldn't get it in the UK, and I think we can. Uh, but yeah, tidy dram, enjoyable, fairly cheap. We'll be covering that shortly. I've, I've had it for a long time now, um, and I really should have covered it already, but again. Right, last one. Oh, Cotswolds. Um, this one is another sealed one that I've got, uh, and you'll have to let me know what you think about this. It's the uh, World Whiskey Forum. Uh, bottled 207 of 250. Uh, I've kept this again because it's a limited edition. It's probably going to do me a favour sooner or later. But I do have a sample of this up there somewhere that someone kindly gave me. So I'm pretty reluctant to open this. As you can see, I don't really keep many bottles closed. So you'll forgive me for keeping a handful. Uh, there are far worse offenders than me in terms of sealed bottles. Well, that's the end of the video. Blimey. Let's have a quick look about where we are. 37 minutes. Thank you very much. If you've stuck with me this entire way, please let me know in the comments below that you are one of the 40 minute club, let's call you, because you guys are the best for watching stuff like this. Hopefully you enjoyed a dram with me while I was going through this. I mean, it's not even the biggest collection in the world, but for me, that is a lot of bottles and a few of them are going to get killed off this Christmas period. But thank you again for everybody who supported my channel so far. Thank you for all your support this year coming up because this year is going to be a huge year. It's going to be a bit of a repeat of last year, I think, with a bit of a summer break. But we'll see, we'll see. No decisions yet. Uh, I've got a lot of bottles to cover. I don't think I'm going to do a samples video this year, um, but if you are well set on watching my samples, <laughs> kind of doing the same sort of thing as this, then do let me know. Uh, in the comments below and don't forget to like this video if you got this far um, you know I mean hit the dislike if you don't want me to do stuff like this anymore but it's uh, typically one of my most viewed videos every year in any case slash shout out to everyone who watches these videos and to everyone who watches whiskey tube in general you guys are awesome we're doing excellent stuff right now everybody in the whole kind of whiskey tube vibe is, is really killing it and I'm just so glad to be part of this family Thank you very much and I'll see you this year, 2020, for another amazing year. Cheers.